Hello, and welcome to a demonstration of workflows in Hampson Russell software. In the next few minutes, we're going to go over the design, the purpose, how to use and edit workflows within the version of software. As you can see, we have the interface up in the window, and over here on the left, I'm looking under the workflow tab, and you can see an array of default workflows. These are the default workflows that come with the physical software. The point and purpose of workflows is no longer do we ask our users to remember all the steps involved in a process. What we have here is now we've outlined all of the steps as you would a cookbook um, start to finish for you. For example, if you wanted to do AVO modeling, you'd open the AVO modeling workflow and we have everything from selecting your wells all the way through to our AVO what if scenarios. This is the entire workflow for creating an AVO model. Likewise, if you want to do a pre or post stack inversion, you'd open up the workflow, you'd start at the top, you'd run all the processes down to the bottom to actually generate your pre stack inversion. No longer do you have to remember all the individual steps yourself, we've outlined them. In this exercise, what we're going to do is we're going to go over conditioning of gathers. We're going to use this as an example. So I'm going to open up conditioning of gathers, and here is a basic workflow for conditioning gathers. First you're going to do a band pass, then you're going to do a mute, super gather, um, an invest, and then some trim statics. We're going to work this through top to bottom, but along the way, just because this is a default workflow doesn't mean it's the exact workflow I have to use. You as a user have control over each of these workflows. You can edit them, you can add things, you can change things, uh, you can make them unique to your own, and you can export and import them into different projects and that's the process we're going to go through. So the first thing you have here is I have my conditioning of gathers default workflow. I have all of my data loaded in. I have my seismic, I have my horizon, and I have my wells. You want to get everything ready to go. The first thing I'm going to do is I don't actually want to do a band pass first. I personally would prefer to do a mute. So what you can do is click on here you right mouse button and you say insert new process above. I simply type in mute, it finds it, I double click, and it fills it in. Mute one, which means I don't really want this one, so I'm going to right mouse button and I'm going to say remove process. There we go. Mute one, I actually don't like that name, so I'm going to say edit tile title. I'm just going to call it mute. So I'm going to build this as I go. First thing I want to do is I want to mute all of this noise off of the data. Uh, before I do that though, I want to see exactly what type of angle am I working with here. So if I simply right click on the seismic, I go to view, I choose my eyeball, I pull this open, my input data is my raw data, I want to see my incident angle, and that requires a velocity. I come over here, I choose my velocity, I'm actually using a well log, you could use stacking velocities or a table. I say OK, I say OK, and now the software is going to display my incident angle based on the velocities that I gave it. Uh, one thing I'd like to add is I'm going to right mouse button again, say view, eyeball, and I want to see my wiggles, so I simply turn my wiggle, my uh, fill trace on, and now I'll have the uh, fill trace on, I can see better. Okay, wonderful. So I'm looking at this data and it looks like in the red I have a maximum of anything from 40 to 41 degrees of angle, which is really nice. First thing I want to do is mute this. It has two options for muting. One, you can actually draw in the physical mute you're interested in, or you could assign a constant angle. But today, we're going to double click on mute and we're going to draw in our mute. The parameters tool is open. My input volume is going to be my raw gathers. It's going to be my mute. I'm going to run it over a subset of the data, which actually is going to be um, a few inlines, which are already specified here. I come back to my basics tab, and now I can just hide this little window right now, and I can start drawing in the actual mute I'm interested in. So if I go up to the top of my window, I just start clicking and drawing in the mute I want, and I can slide down, and I want it to go all the way down to here. If I don't 
like it, I can just drag it in a little bit, change it around how I want it. I push my parameters button here on the right, and my button comes back. It has filled in the mute table for me, and I'm ready to go. I choose Run. The process runs, and when it's done, there's a very nice feature that the input data will be on the left, and the output data will be on the right. There's our mute. You can see I have left a little bit of energy on here. I could have cut off more. You can come back and edit that. You can change it. But for the purposes of our demonstration, you can very easily see that the large amount of noise on the far offsets has been taken care of. Now, I want to know what type of amplitude spectrum I'm actually looking at because though I've now gotten rid of a lot of noise on my far offsets, I want to see what type of noise I have in my data set. So before I run my bandpass, I actually am going to right mouse button, say insert above, then type amplitude for amplitude spectrum, and double click. It inserts the amplitude spectrum in my workflow for me. I open it up. I want to run it on my entire data range of my mute. I say run, the process runs, and here's my amplitude spectrum looks fairly good but I'm gonna cut off some data here I'm gonna do something like a 510 3080 kind of band pass go back to my seismic I can turn off my super gathers by just clicking on this little eye, number one eyeball my data set there it is I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna now run my band pass my input data is my butte my output data is my band pass I'm gonna run a 5, 10, 30, 80 bandpass process. I say run, the process completes, and again, which is nice, puts my input on the left and my output on the right. We can see we've cleaned up significant amount of noise in this area. And just to double check it before I go on, I'm going to right mouse button click again, I'm going to insert above, and I want to put another amplitude spectrum in here. I want to verify that I actually removed what I think I'm removing. So my input data is going to be my band pass. I'm going to run it over the entire data set. I say run one more time. And yes, I have removed some of the noise that I was interested in. Come back to seismic yet again. I'm going to turn off my input volume, which is an eyeball number one. I'm looking at my data, and now I'm going to run a super gather. Open up my super gather tool. Uh, my input is my band pass. My output is going to be a super gather. And in this case, I am going to do, let's see, 25 offsets. And I don't want to run this over my entire offset range. I'm going to cut it down. I'm going to do it from 270 to roughly 4,500. Double check my input output names just to be sure. So it's going to be a 3 by 3 and I say run. The process runs and once it's done, again, we will see our input on the left and our output on the right. And here is our final super gather. The data is looking much cleaner, much nicer. You can see how things are straightening up. For this demonstration, I don't particularly want to do an invest, um, which you can do on your own, but just to show the purpose here, I'm going to remove this process from my workflow. I removed it. The next thing I want to do is I'm going to run a trim statics. I want to flatten out a number of these events. So again, I'm going to close my input so I have a little better view of what's going on. Double click trim statics. The parameters window pops up. My input is my super gather. My output is my trim statics. Now I just have to set out my parameters. I'm going to start it at a constant time of 1500. We're going to move uh, below my constant time, 2000. I do not want more than a maximum window step of 50 uh, number of windows to an I don't want more than a there we go and my cross
cross-correlation, I think, should be, let's see, when we're done, we go ahead and say, run, the process runs. Once complete, yet again, input on left, output on right, and we'll see how we have flattened a number of these events. You can compare them left and right. I will do some zooming in. We'll zoom in right in this area. And you can see how things that were pulling up on the left are now flattened on the right. If I want to focus it back on my well location, I just choose my little well icon. Everything pops in. So what I've done now is I took a standard default Hampson Russell gather conditioning workflow and as I went along the process, I, I added things in to make it mine. Something interesting is it's now not under the default tab, it's saved here on the left under the user tab. It's specific to me now. Just to be safe, I'm going to say project save at this point. And if I go back to the default tab, I click default, data conditioning, you'll see here's the original workflow. If I go back to users, you'll see data conditioning. I open it up. Here's the one I made. If I want to rename this, I just click, right mouse button click here on the top. I come down to, should be rename right here, edit title, and I'm going to call this um, my condition gathers, just to make it easier to tell. There is everything. Back to default. There's the original. So this is mine. It's in this project. It's saved. At any point, though, it's, it's just in this project. Let's say I have a partner who needs to do the same workflow, and we need to have um, the same exact processes running. I can very simply save this out and save it to another project. Mouse button click and say export workflow and parameters. It pops up. I want to physically put it in my project. I'm going to call it my workflow and say save. Once that process is done, if you go to that actual data location, what you'll find is in your workflow, in your actual projects directory, these two files have appeared. These are my actual um, personal workflow files that have been saved to disk. What I want to do now is I want to load those parameters into a different project. So just be safe, I'm going to say project save. My project saves. I'm going to go back to my start tab. Instead of running my workflow project, I'm going to double click on my colony and I'm going to switch to my colony project. The software will switch projects here in just a second. And when it's done, I'll see my new seismic data for my colony project, which is up. If I go to my workflow tab, one, I don't have a users tab. And if I go to data conditioning, it's the default one. So what I want to do now is I want to choose this center icon, import workflow. I go to that workflow location. I double click on both of my options. It fills in my workflow files, my parameters files. I say OK. And now I have a new tab, new workflow tab, and it's already defaulted and expanded it to my conditions for gathering mute, amplitude spectrum, bandpass, amplitude spectrum, super gather, trim statics. Go back to default, close it out, there's my defaults, I come here, my workflow is loaded in. So very quickly, in just a matter of minutes, I have shown you how these workflows that we've made are very, very useful. These are your cookbooks, these are your starting points, these are the workflows you're going to use to run different processes in Hampson Russell. I've shown you how you can edit them on the fly along the way, build them as you go. You have the ability to put things in, pull things out. You can also make these completely from scratch under your personal user um, ID, your personal user tab. It's a fantastic tool. You can standardize processes in your offices. You can do all sorts of things that you have control over now. The workflow driven 
aspect of Hampson Russell is phenomenal. You can move it from project to project. I hope you play with it. I hope you enjoy it. I hope you make brand new workflows that are just for you and enjoy the new version of Hampson Russell software. Thank you.